Hi, this is Carrie with Wandering Angel Studio, and today we're here for the first in a series called One Sheet Wonders. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take one sheet of scrapbook paper, 12 by 12, and we're going to make something out of it. And this is going to be an ongoing series. I have five or six projects already lined up. My goal is to get 12 for you. The idea is to use up what you already have and do it with one sheet of paper. I've seen a lot of these done, and um, what they end up doing is they, they'll use one sheet of scrapbook paper, but then they add in like tea dyed paper and a bunch of other stuff. That's not what this series is about. This series is about using one sheet of scrapbook paper, and that's it, other than some glue. Okay, so today, what are we making out of this sheet? Well, this is a sheet out of the Tim Holtz French Industrial Pad, and what these are, the four different images here, and they're each six by six. And what they are is, is they are miniatures of the sheets that are actually in the paper pad. Like I said, this is Tim Holtz uh, French Industrial Paper Pad. So what are we going to make today? We are going to make little envelopes. These are like uh, coin pouches, okay? There's a small version here, and... There's a larger version. The cool thing about the larger version is it will actually hold artist trading cards. Let me get a blank one here and I'll show you. So you can slip an artist trading card in here if you like to make artist trading cards and you can send this, not through the mail because it's too small, but you can put it in another envelope and send it. So in addition to getting the artist trading card, they'll also get a little envelope that they can use for ephemera and whatever they, you know, whatever your friends want to use. I made a craft one here because I wanted to demonstrate, you know, yes, you can make them out of craft and they look pretty cool. You can also buy them in bulk um, as craft envelopes. But the thing is, you, you don't get the designs that you want. And that's why we're going to be using Tim Holtz paper today. Now, there are two sizes here. They're both made out of six by six sheets of paper. Instead of cutting this on screen to save time, I've already cut some paper. I've got bunches here. I've got um, paper from both the dapper paper pads as well as the French Industrial. Really like that. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to score and fold these so that you get both sizes. Um, it takes one sheet of paper for each size. Let me put these aside here. Okay, so let's get started. Very simple, very easy to do this. Bring my score pal over. Now, I rotate this piece of paper because it's just easier for me to keep track. Okay, you're going to decide, this is this is directional paper, so you're going to decide if you want the directional paper to show up uh, correctly. That is, um, let me find a piece. For example, this, okay, so that it's, it's up and down the way it's supposed to be instead of upside down. Uh, this is another example here, okay. All right, so because this is directional paper, I'm gonna turn it sideways to make my first two scores. Because what I'm doing is I'm scoring for the top and the bottom. So I'm scoring at the five inch mark, because this is a six by six inch piece of paper. Also, if you have six by six pads, great way to use those up, okay? Flipped it around, again, scoring at five. Like I said, it's easier for me. If you wanna score at the five inch mark and the one inch mark, have at it. This is just easier for me, okay. Now I'm gonna come over here, and the first one we're gonna make is the large one. So I'm gonna score at one and a half. Okay, and this is the only difference between the two, and you'll see when I, because I'm gonna go ahead and score everything at one time, so you'll see when I score the other one what the difference is. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it completely around, and I'm gonna score at one and three quarters. That quarter inch is what makes the difference between the small envelope and the large envelope. Okay, let's use this music sheet because this is really nice. It's directional as well. So again, we're gonna score at five inches. This is for our top and bottom flaps, by the way. And I'm gonna score at one inch instead of just flipping this around. Okay, now this one's gonna be small. So we're gonna score it at one and three quarters. I love this paper, it's so pretty. And it makes gorgeous little envelopes. 
and we're also going to score this side at one and three quarters. Now remember the other one we scored at one and a half. This we're scoring at one and three quarters. It's that quarter inch that makes the difference in the size of the two envelopes. Okay, we've got all our scoring done. Put that away. Now we need to do some cutting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually cut all these corners out. Let me flip this over so I can see this a little bit better. I wanna make sure I get this on camera. So what we're doing is we're cutting these four corners out on each side. Tuck at that. Very, very, very easy to do, very quick. You can make multiples of them very fast. What I usually do is I usually score a bunch of them and then cut all these corners out and then do my creasing and my gluing um, at one time. And they make, like I said, they make great gifts if you wanna give them with the artist trading cards in them or you can put them in your junk journals. Um, you can use them in your purse as actual coin pockets, however you choose to use them. Okay, we've got all our pieces cut on that one. If you notice the one side is larger than the other, we're going to go ahead and cut out the smaller one now. Same thing, we're going to cut all four corners out. This is real relaxing to do for me. I, I enjoy... I enjoy the repetition, I can get lost in it, and because it's an easy project, it just, things just go so much faster, and I made a stack of them. I actually made a stack, I'll show you real quick, of craft envelopes. They're just, they're just cool, they're just fun to have. And um, yes, you can order the craft ones in bulk, Amazon and party places and that kind of thing, but I prefer to make my own, I just enjoy making them. Okay, one more corner here, and then we can start our creasing. My next video is going to be a folder video. I had promised this video about a week ago, and it's how to make... Let me pull the folder real quick. It's how to make this folder. It is a one-sheet wonder in, in that the folder itself and some of the embellishments can be made all out of one sheet. I did add extra embellishments to this though. So, and I'll show you what I added. The coin, the coin uh, book was one of them. That's a piece of Tim Holtz ephemera. And of course this is Tim Holtz paper because hey, I love Tim Holtz paper. All right, put that out of the way. We've got our corners. So now I'm gonna flip this over. And I don't ink these until the very end. Um, once the envelope is together, especially if I'm not sure what book I'm putting it in. You know, if I'm putting it in a junk journal or I'm giving it as a gift, that's when I really come back and decide, well, am I gonna ink it? If so, what color am I gonna ink it? Okay, now that you've got it like this, now is the time you wanna round the corners, okay? Because if you try to do it this way, yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> so now is the time to round the corners if you want to round them. If you have a decorative punch that, you know, punches fancy little holes in the corners, that'll work too. As long as you can get it in the corner punch, you're good to go. So you can do a lot of things with this in terms of decoration. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold over here, crease this. And you'll notice one of these tabs folds over a little bit easier than the other one. Like this one folded over really easy. That's my bottom. <laughs> and that's usually how I determine, um, unless it's directional paper like this. Okay, so flip it around. And I'm gonna put glue on the inside here. I use my trusty little tape runner. There we go. And there we are. And then I'm gonna put tape on this one. And there's your small envelope, just like that. It's that easy. Now let's do the big one. And you'll see the difference when we uh, fold the small side in first. Slide this little envelope out of the way here for a sec. Okay. Aren't these just cute? They're just so adorable. I just want to sit and make bunches of them because I enjoy doing it. Okay. Around the corners. Now, 
Now for this one, what I like to do is I like to take the short side and put it on top because it makes the envelope look more even. And if like here, you didn't cut those uh, pieces out on the corners, you know, straight, that's okay. Nobody's gonna notice because you're gonna pull this flap up and that flap's gonna cover everything, okay? So I'm gonna put the glue on top this time on the longer side and then just flip this over. And since this is directional, this is gonna be my bottom. There you go. And we crease the top and we're done. It's that fast. So I hope you wanna make a lot of them. Um, they're, like I said, they're lots of fun. Here's the craft envelopes that I made. Um, where's the other? Here's a larger craft envelope that I made and a bunch of the, out of the Tim Holtz paper. These I think are out of the dapper paper pad. So there you go, bunches and bunches. Have fun with it, I hope you enjoy it. And now you know what to do with those six by six pieces of paper in your Tim Holtz paper pad. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button if you like the video. We have lots of videos coming up, so I'm sure you don't wanna miss those. And have a great day.